Imagine your story, a fantasy-themed PowerPoint class. This is a youth services program presented by librarian Selena. Welcome, everyone. Here you will learn how to make a PowerPoint presentation all about your favorite fantasy series. Learn to create a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation with a fantasy theme. Children will learn the basics of PowerPoint, such as inserting slides, adding a theme, customizing the background, and changing the font style, and inserting and formatting pictures, adding transitions, hyperlinks, audio, and video. Best for children ages 7 to 12, parents and caregivers are welcome to attend. Finding your books. So if you're not sure what series or topic you want to discuss or explore on your PowerPoint, go to goodreads.com. Type in a title, author, or just type the word fantasy, and then it's going to list different fantasy series that are popular, like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and other fantasy series that are very popular. If you need ideas for what topic to do your PowerPoint on, this is a great resource to refer to. That's goodreads.com, and it also lists all the different titles within a particular book series, so it's very helpful if it's not obvious which book is the next book to read. You may also find books using our library catalog, Broward.org slash library. The catalog search box is near the top of the screen. You can search by title or author if you need ideas. You'll notice if you search in the catalog, it's going to let you know if the titles are available. If it has place hold next to it, that means that there is a wait list for that title. So you might have to wait a few days or a few weeks or a few months for the title, depending on its popularity. It also lets you know if the book is an ebook format. So remember, if it is an ebook format or e audio format, you typically need to go through Access 360 or OverDrive to access that book title. Access 360 has our largest collection of children's and teen books, and you can download it as an app on your Apple or Android device, or you can visit the website on your computer or laptop. So if you are a child or adult, a young adult in the teenage years, I would recommend using Access 360 if you're looking for books. Access 360 is best for ages 6 to 17 years of age. And you can see they have a lot of popular series like Big Nate and Wings of Fire and Harry Potter that you can borrow. In order to open PowerPoint, typically the PowerPoint icon will be located on your computer's desktop or start menu. Click on the icon in order to open the software. Make sure to double click on the icon if the icon is located on your desktop. When making new slides, you go to the home ribbon and select the new slide button in the slides group. Typically you want to start with the title slide as your first slide. Usually that's the default slide that the software automatically inserts. I always recommend selecting your theme first. So you would want to select the design tab and then once you select the design tab from the menu bar in PowerPoint, then you'll be able to select what design you want. If you plan on printing the PowerPoint slides, you might want to go with a background that's light in color or, and only has like a few accent colors because you don't want to use up all your color ink because the darker slides can use up a lot of color ink. So just keep that in mind. This is an example of the title slide. You would click here to add title and click to add subtitle. So of course the title is what you would put in the first box and the subtitle is where you would want to add your name so that you get credit for your work. So here's an example, my favorite fantasy, Lord of the Rings by Sammy Sample. Click on the new slide button every time you need a new slide. You can also select the layout button too, which is just to the right of that to pick the different layouts, whether it's title and slide, title and content, or section headers. So first we're gonna work on our hero page. So in PowerPoint, you after you've selected whatever layout you want, you're going to click in there and add your text if you're gonna add any text. And of course, there's a button to add the pictures. And you'll see it's right there. That's a little picture button, or you can also go to the insert menu and add pictures that way. And then you'll see in the insert option, there's pictures and online pictures. So pictures is where the pictures that are saved onto your computer. Like if you have family photos or uh, photos of your favorite character saved on your computer, you could upload those to your PowerPoint presentation. But oftentimes people have to go to the online pictures option, and then it allows you to do a Bing image search. So you type in the name of your character or topic there. And then it will give you search results and you would just click on whatever your results are. You'll see here we have a character from the Lord of the Rings and there's a nice quote here from the Lord of the Rings. And we'll see also at the bottom that we have cited the source. So it's good to cite your sources, especially if you're doing this for school purposes. You definitely want to cite your sources. So we've cited the photo here 
of the Lord of the Rings character and hero. In order to adjust the image, left click on the image and the format, uh, picture tools format menu. Notice that each corner has a white dot and the four sides have white dots as well. Place your mouse cursor on one of the four corners and left click and drag to adjust the size of the image. Moving the arrow to the right will make the image larger and moving it to the left will make the image smaller. If you want to add a nice border or picture effects to your image, when you're in the picture tools format menu, to the right of those options, you're going to see the option of picture border and picture effects. You would select one of those options and explore the different borders and effects that you can add to the presentation. And now we're going to do the same thing for our favorite villain page. So I have the example of the White Witch from the Chronicles of Narnia. And you'll see again, we've cited the photo since this photo is copyrighted. So just because something is on the internet, usually it's copyrighted. So you can only use these images for educational purposes. You can't use these images to sell a product or service. If you want to use this for business purposes, then you have to get permission from the copyright holder. You can repeat this process for as many slides as you want. You can add your favorite place, your favorite action scene from your favorite book or TV show that you like that's fantasy related. So we're going to add some animation to our next slides here. So in order to an animate something, you got to select the picture or the text, and then you would go to the animations menu. And then it gives you all these options about fly in, float in, appear, and zoom. So we have this picture. We're going to have a picture here of Harry Potter. And you'll see that we selected the fly in option. So if you wanted to have a picture of Harry Potter fly in, of course, you would select the picture. Then you would go to the animations menu and then you would select fly in or fade or whatever option you wanted. And you'll see they have all these different you have entrances, emphasis and exits. So the entrances kind of show things that happen as the picture enter, enters the photo. So doing the fly-in option for Harry Potter on a broomstick photo is a very good option. It makes a lot of sense. You can also create motion paths. So underneath exit, you see there's motion paths here. You can have a line, you can have a shape of a circle or a loop. And I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of that. So you kind of drag and decide what path the animation is going to go. And there we go, there's a star. And then we have the little f green flag moving around. And then we have Harry Potter here flying in to get the golden snitch. And it has disappeared. So you can see how that can add a little more excitement to your PowerPoint presentation. Don't forget to change font. You would go to the home ribbon in the font styles group and you could select the different file uh, font formats. If you're going to add a text box and stuff, you can also right click and then you'll have the font option here. So that's another way you can use the main menu or you can right click in the text box and select font and then pick this a different style if you like. Slide transitions. So we just had an example of a slide transitions. So the slide transitions affect all, um, one or more of the slides in the PowerPoint presentation. So you'll see here there's a lot of different options like the wipe and the split and random bars and shapes and fracture and curtains. So you have to pick what transition makes sense for the topic of your PowerPoint. You know, like dissolve would probably be a really good option if you're doing a futuristic technology kind of based society. Whereas, you know, Harry Potter, you might want something more magical, like glitter or curtains or something. Once you're in the transitions menu, you could select apply to all to apply the changes to all your slides. And you'll see we have a nice transition there, kind of of a book flipping pages. So you'll see there's subtle, exciting, and dynamic changes. So it just depends how dramatic you want your transitions to be when you go from slide to slide. The exciting transitions are longer and do more than the subtle ones. The dynamic transitions incorporate the image 
in, as part of the transition, like the dragon. Inserting hyperlinks is also a very good thing for PowerPoint presentations. A hyperlink will take you to a new website or another document by clicking on the link. Most hyperlinks take you to a website on the internet, but they can also go to another section within your presentation or another document on your computer. Just typing a website address and pressing the space key or enter key will make the text into a hyperlink automatically. So that's one way of getting a hyperlink. Here's a second method for hyperlinks is you would go to the insert menu and select the hyperlink option. And then it's going to allow you to browse for the file if you're trying to link to a file. And then you have the option there, pick your file and then hit OK. And then it can take you to that other presentation if needed. You'll notice that you can update the hyperlink for the website. You'll see here that I have text to display shows click here. And then there's the Broward County Library website address. You can copy and paste the link into this address area. You also notice that this book is hyperlinked as well. So that's another option too, is you can hyperlink objects and pictures too. In order to insert audio into your PowerPoint presentation, you would go to the insert tab in the top ribbon and in the media section on the right hand side you're going to see the audio option. Click on the audio button and you have two options audio on my PC or recorded audio. The recorded audio of course only works if you have a microphone attached to your computer. Oftentimes people will have an audio file like a music file on their computer and that's where you would select audio on my PC if you want to insert a music file. As a saying be careful that this PowerPoint is being used for educational or recreational purposes because audio files and music files are copyrighted and you don't want to be sued by a copyright holder. Beware of switching computers or storage devices when creating a PowerPoint presentation. Remember video and audio files should be saved to the same computer and storage device as the PowerPoint presentation or the files will fail to work. So for example, if you're saving all this work on your home computer and then you take it on, put it on a USB drive and try to access it on your work or school computer, you might run into problems because it's going to have trouble finding those files unless you've connected and saved all those files, audio and video files to the USB drive and made sure that they're all operational before you try to access them on a different computer. Inserting video is in the same location in the media area and you can do video online and video on my PC. So they do allow you to insert some YouTube videos. And then they also have the option for embedded code. If you have any embedded code, you can put it there. But just keep in mind, YouTube videos are copyrighted, so you can only use this PowerPoint for educational, recreational purposes. And beware of switching computers or storage devices, especially when you're working with video and audio files. They need to be saved to the same computer and st storage device, or your, f your audio or your video files will not work. So what I would recommend, if you're going to be working on this PowerPoint presentation at home and then you're going to work in school, save your PowerPoint and all the files to the same USB storage device and bring that storage device with you to work or school. Additional resources, visit the library's website, broward.org library. Click on the e-media option from the menu and select one of the resources below. You can select ebooks and e-audiobooks. If you click on that, then it will take you to Access 360. There's also Hoopla, Universal Class, and Canopy. Hoopla is really great uh, for videos and for comic books. They also have ebooks and e audiobooks and music that you can listen to. And there are no wait lists within Hoopla, which is really nice. Universal Class is great if you need some online classes for Microsoft Office, like PowerPoint, Word, and other software applications. They even have math, writing, and other types of tutorials related to math and science and anatomy. So that's really good for probably middle school, high school students. And then Canopy has a lot of online movies for all ages. You can watch up to six films or six episodes per month. Hoopla allows you to use eight items, either videos, music, or eBooks. Visit our youth page for information about live online tutoring, services, events, internet safety, and online resources. 
brower.org slash library slash pages slash youth. For more help, contact any Broward County Library Reference Desk. Our list of library locations and contact information is available in the Quick Links menu. You just select the Branch Locations option, and you can see a list of our locations. We have 38 locations throughout Broward County. Thanks for viewing the Imagine Your Story, a fantasy-themed PowerPoint presentation. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint presentation, then please email cybrary at broward.org with the subject line of Youth PowerPoint.